is what the program's all about today. Surface fishing for carp with a controller float. It's early June and the fish are up in the water. And at this time of the year, you can catch them right on the surface. This is what I'm going to show you how to do today. The water I'm fishing is called Fields End and it's fairly close to the town of March, right in the heart of Cambridgeshire. So, <laughs> while I was chatting, I just sort of, I was out there, the rod's gone round and I'm into a fish already. The water temperature is quite good, although it's a, one of those days when it's fairly, fairly windy. Wind is coming over my back and when you're fishing, this style of fishing, it's good if you get the wind behind you. So it's taking your float and your bait and everything away from you. And the fish in here are always, they're all a good size. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? While I was chatting away, I'm into a fish. Look at that rod, is bent right down. And what I did was, um, I'd started feeding about 30 minutes ago, just putting in some surface baits and watching for the carp, just to get them into the area and to get them to come up in the water. They don't naturally always start up on the surface, but they, the plop of the bait going in, the fish hear it, they respond to it, a good powerful rod. This is I just love this style of fishing. It's got a clutch set as well, so I'll tighten that up a little bit. You can see that uh, controller float coming in just in front of the fish, just come out of the water then. And a big long tail. Looks like one of these, these are special sort of carp in here. They're a, they're a particular type of, of mirror carp, most of them are bluish. They have a bluish gray color to them. Very fast growing type of fish. Powerful, though they really fight well. <laughs> this is certainly a good, st a good start to the session. The thing is though, once you hook a fish, because I'm dying now to feed a little bit more bait to get the fish there. Not a bad size, not much, they're all good, goodish size, but they, you can get sometimes big, big doubles in here. This is, looks like five or six pound, I think. <laughs> not ready to come in yet though. Just using a combination of the back wind on the reel and the clutch really it was coming in quite quite easy until I got it near the net really as I say they're very very hard fighting fish I've got a quite a you can see the float there now special controller float really is fighting. <laughs> Fantastic fishing. I think this is going to be a good session. Oh, that's a bit bigger than I thought. It's a lovely, lovely fish. I've got strong line, powerful rod. Still, I can't get that fish in. Putting a, a lot of pressure on it. Yeah, it's a bit bigger than I thought it was. It's a lovely fish to, to start with. Once you get the fish up on the surface, then and just slide the net underneath it. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Oh yeah, it's much bigger than I thought. It's a tremendous fish. Oh, my bait's gone as well, but just hooked just hooked in the bottom lip. Quite often happens like that as they come to take the bait. You never know quite where you're going to hook it. I'm fishing with a hair rig floating bait, so. There, let me just show that to camera. That is a, that is a lovely fish. 
You'll see what I mean there about the, the bluish... It is a mirror cart, but the, a line of scales along the top. And a bluish... A bluish tinge to them, really. Bluish, greyish tinge. Perfect condition, though. What a lovely fish. Probably... Um, probably more than six pounds. Real hard fight fish. Doesn't look like it's been caught before. Great start. This is what I caught that fish on. An 11 millimeter expander pellet. Hair rigged. You can see the hook there. Running through into a, into a hair rig and floating on the surface. A long tail probably about eight foot between the hook and the controller float. But the wind is blowing, and it's quite strong today, coming from behind me. So when I cast out, the expander pellet itself will be beyond that. So it's a good way, it's a, it's a nice, heavy controller float. They come in various sizes, but this one's about perfect for today. Nice, easy cast, dead straight. Lovely. Also, when the float goes in, it makes a bit of a splash. That helps attract the fish. If you can see the float now, we're on the surface. Just showing. So the float itself is fully loaded. Don't need to do anything to it. So it's just on the surface. And you can imagine the expander pellet is eight foot beyond that. Two and a half meters beyond that. But, like all sorts of fishing, the fish won't just come to one floating pellet. You have to feed. And I've soaked some here. I've got some soaking in water. The same, the same pellets, if you have a look, soaked in water, just to give them a bit of extra weight so they make a bit of noise when they hit the water. A couple at a time, just really they want to be this side of the float and then they'll drift with the wind. They'll just drift with the wind towards the hook bait. So feed them a little bit short and let them drift and watch for signs of fish. Only one or two at a time, not too many. Watch you don't overfeed them. Then just watch for signs of fish coming to the surface. Oh, I, just, I just saw a tiny fish try to attack my bait then. Probably, probably it was a roach, I think. Just saw a little, little swirl just behind the float. Now what I've done, if you, if you have a look to where I've positioned the rod rest, I've got the anti-reverse off on my, uh, on my reel so that the handle will spin if I get a bite. But the rod is just at a slight angle to where I'm fishing. And the fish, because, because I'm using a hair rig bait, the fish, when it takes, it will hook itself. So all you need to do then, once you see the rod, either you can look at the rod tip or the float go, you, all you need to do is just pick up the rod and the fish is on. That's the advantage of using and there it goes. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, nearly took off the rest. That was incredible. <laughs> Just chatting about it and the rod went round. Oh dear. <laughs> and I'm in again. Just that's all it needs to do. And it, it's. We're just talking about that and the rod just shot round off the rest and I'm into another good fish. And it's here under my feet all the time. What happens? That controller is on a. It's just free running, so as the fish whizzes, uh, the float can come back towards you as the fish runs away. Feels like a really good fish, this. Really came in quick at first. Now, a controller float really is just a means of getting your bait out to the area that you want to be, and then holding your line up to the surface so that everything floats on the surface. And the line runs through the top of the float.
quite unusual really. The float is weighted and, and hangs down in the water and then your line runs completely through the top. This particular one I'm using today is designed by Premier Floats. Really good quality. They're a local firm really, they're a local float making firm. They live quite close to me. It feels like another. They're always really good quality fish here. And just have a look at that rod. If you just have a look at the rod now, look at the arc in the rod. This rod was designed for fishing a pellet waggler. It's a fox, special fox rod designed for pellet waggler fishing, but I love to use it for this style of fishing as well. It's 11 foot, probably about a pound test curve, so plenty of power in it. And ideal for playing these fish. Just when you're playing these fish, just try to keep your arm on the rod itself, running down the handle. That's where you get your power from. And I've, as I said, I've got this clutch just set. Every now and again, you'll hear it start to go. If the fish really runs, then what I do is just let the, the reel back wind a bit. I mean, that's brilliant. Two fish so quickly. You can see why I love this style of fishing. It's so exciting. Everything's so violent sometimes. Because when the fish sucks in that bait and feels a hook, that's when the, the rod will fly around. That's why I like to use a special type of rod rest as well. I've got a rod rest here that stops the rod from flying off if a fish takes. And I needed it just now. It's strange, you know, sometimes the fish you catch on the surface are the biggest ones. I don't know if they, they feel safer when they take baits off the surface or what, but they always seem to be bigger fish. Oh, this is not, this is a lovely common. This is not, not one of the typical mirrors. These, these are quite rare to catch here. It's a lovely, beautiful common carp. Oh. oh. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I can see I'm going to be in for a good day. Not a big fish. Looks like that, looks like that just flicked out then, did it? Can't see the hook in the fish. Hook just slipped off then as I, as I went to land it. Well, that was lucky. Oh, let me show you this fish. Big common carp. Let me show this to camera, it's such a lovely fish. Probably about six pounds again. About that. Look at the size of that tail. Look at that lovely orange tinged tail at the bottom. And beautiful even scales. That's how you can tell a common, a common carp. Nice evenly distributed scales. And this lovely golden colour. Can't wait to get back in again. Slip it back, and we're ready for the next one. Hmm, safely away. Let me show you how to set up a controller float rig. The, the line I'm using, the main line, is 0.22 millimeter, about 10 pound breaking strain. You need quite a heavy line, we're catching big carp today. The controller is Premier Floats carp controller, 70 grams, so quite a big float, so it is really windy today. And the float really sits in the water like that, and the line goes through the top. So this is your sight, Bob, 
and everything is kept, as I said, near the surface. So, the first job is to put, and that's free running, so to put the float on the, on the line itself, that free runs, but it needs to be stopped, and I, I stop it with a, a swivel bead, a stop swivel bead, small swivel bead, thread that on and through, that sort of goes up against the float, it's a rubber, a small rubber bead, then a normal barrel swivel to suit the, the swivel bead, that, that will tuck inside, always worry about your knots, if you don't tie your knots properly then you'll lose fish. Now this knot is a tucked half blood, so you put it through the swivel, you turn it five times, five or six doesn't really matter, but I usually do about five turns, and then you put it through that loop, see that loop there, just, if you can get that just through that loop, and then you have to tuck it, if you don't tuck it, it will slip, so you then tuck it back through that whole loop, there, called a tucked half blood, you need just to wet it, pull it tight, when you pull it tight test it, just to make sure you've tucked it properly, really give it a good hard pull, find it doesn't slip and then trim it off, it doesn't have to be trimmed off that tightly, just trim it off, I usually leave about an eighth of an inch there and you'll find that the swivel bead that you put on this this stop swivel bead will will clip over and lock on that that swivel will push into so it will push into there so it really sinks into the bead itself and then attach your hook length once again use the same knot for that for attaching the hook length the tucked half blood, five turns, put it through, through the first loop and then tuck it back through the second, wet it, pull it, just make sure yeah, that's good, it won't slip. I'll run through the hair rig knot and, the, and how to do the hook length later. So that's, that's a fairly simple rig, free running float, a long hook length, and then all you need to do is bait up. As I say, I'm using these have a look, I'm using these special 11mm expander pellets, but they've been treated with a halibut oil to sort of toughen them and harden them, and really to stop the water soaking in too quickly. If the water soaks in quickly, then you'll find that they're not as buoyant and it will sink. Once these sink, of course, they're not any good at all. And just pull that on the hair rig. Just pull it through with a, a, a baiting needle. Then it needs a small stop just in the back. And pull it down to. Just a small bait stop hanging on the back. I like to have that, if you have a look, where, if you see where the, the hook is hanging in relationship to the pellet, the expander pellet, just wants, that, that bend of the hook just wants to be touching the pellet there, just to leave it fairly free when the carp grabs it, the hook is then free to go into the fish. I wonder if the fish will still be there, I've been talking for a long while, they're probably not there now. Try to, when you're fishing, try to pick a marker and keep everything going in, the, in a similar area, it doesn't matter today, it is moving a little bit the float, but sort of spinning round a little bit in the wind. Just try
try to keep the pellets and everything going in in the same place. I'm leaving the line on the top at the moment. Don't think it helps to sink it. Then you can see the you can see the controller float. Now imagine the bait is beyond that. And then you can feed. Just two of these at a time, these and I've soaked these pellets so you can feed two of these at a time. Just around the area, just short of the area. And what will happen when this as long as you've got the wind behind you, it's going to carry the bait away from you and the fish will come up to that bait. They will always come up to where, it, where, it, where the bait is going in. They're always greedy. So they'll eventually end up where the bait's going in. Try and fire them up in the air as well so they make a bit of a plop. That's why I've wetted them so that they're they're a bit heavier and they make a little bit more noise then as they go in. Plunk. Fish hear that, fish respond to noise, they hear the bait going in. It's quite a simple way of fishing if you think about it. Your bait's on the surface and, and you can visually look at that or else if you're doing something else <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see the rod or you'll feel the rod as it, as it goes round like in that last fish. may want to just go out a little bit further, I might have cast that a little bit short. I think the fish, the bait is going away a little bit so I experimented. It's pulling the float round a little bit as well but you can see the float itself quite visible just perfect the way it's riding on the surface there holding the bait a little bit still just 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 moving around you can if you want pay off line I don't usually bother I usually just leave the rod set up at that distance and let the let the bait move slightly with the wind But if you find that the fish are a lot further away you can cast further or else you can release some line and let it drift off. I'm into another fish. Really does work this method. It's good to and you notice I just pick the rod up, lift it into the fish, they hook themselves anyway. The reel I'm using today is a Fox Stratus and it's a, a 7000, a lovely smooth reel with a, a big spool, perfect line lay. Not a massive reel, it's got a bait, bait runner type facility which I don't use, I'm not using today but still a, a big powerful reel. I use this reel for all my normal feeder fishing. I find it's just perfect, it's really smooth. Still a lot of power through the reel handle though. And with the clutch setting, if you, if you get a reel and the clutch setting is at the front, it's always more sensitive. You can get it just perfect. I can, just enough to, if that fish really pulls, it can't break me. And the rod, as I say, this one's specially designed really for the pellet waggler, but it's just a lovely short rod. Ideal for throwing that controller float a long distance, but also with plenty of power to handle the fish. <laughs> oh, And the controller itself rides back up the line because it's, you see when I set it up, it's a free run and it'll ride back up the line and it's, it's, it, it's running across the surface at the moment. Gives you a good idea, if you look out there, it gives you a good idea of where the, the fish is and what direction the fish is going in. So it's just perfect for playing the fish. <laughs> it's just standing right up now. Really putting some pressure on this fish as well. Got a good strong hook. Strong hook length, everything is, 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 is powerful on this. 
can never know what size fish. The biggest fish I've had on this method is uh, about 15 pounds. So, but the, obviously you can catch much bigger fish than that. It is the sort of method that catches big fish. So I'm bringing the fish in close, nice and smoothly, till I assess the size of it. But always be ready when you get the fish in close there now for that surge. Get ready for that. If the fish runs, I've got the anti reverse off, so I can I can let the reel backwind. Apart from just the clutch, I can let the reel backwind. Because if I didn't, sometimes them fish can break you, even though you've got your clutch set. They still can break you, or the hook can just... We don't use a massive hook for this sort of fishing, so... There's only a 16 I've got on here. So if it does surge away, the hook can pull out. It's just, just a method that's... Just lovely. It's all visual. You can sit and watch your, your float. You can't see your bait at that distance, but you can often see the fish take and just pick up the, the pellet. Just trying to control the fish and get it to get on the surface and so I can get a look at it. Get it to take that first breath, that first gulp of air. That seems to slow them down a bit if you can do that. So smooth, I love this reel, it's so smooth for handling the fish. Smooth and powerful. This looks like another, another good fish. But they're always lovely fish. And what sort is it this time? Uh, just caught a glimpse of it then. Beautiful fish, lovely, another one of those lovely mirror carp, I think. <laughs> Clutch just went to then. I'm, as I net the fish, I put my finger on the reel just to hold it. <laughs> just to hold it. Another one safely in the net. Oh. Just caught be behind the fish, I think. Looks like that boily. Looks like there's some somebody else's line there as well. Let's have a look. Now this one. This one is a normal mirror carp. See, it hasn't got that bluish, bluish gray tinge, it's more yellow. And look at that lovely yellow tail. Massive paddle. And about five pound. But perfect fish. Such, such good condition. Really lovely. And fight, the fight it put up. So much power. Put him away, and we're ready to catch another one. At least they're feeding really well today. I want to show you how I tie my hair rig, how I do the hook length and tie the hair rig. This is a line I use. It's important to use a high-tech line, a clear line that the fish can't see. And this particular one is just over eight pound breaking strain it is 0.20 mil quite a thick line quite strong and the line is white it's a clear line so the way i tie a hook and it is difficult it's really hard so it's i'm going to try and show you how to do it first of all you need the the length which is about seven or eight foot of line and then cut off that line away from the spool so you've got the length of line then if you just 
fold one end over. Now you need to tie a small sort of loop just to get your baiting needle through. Now I use to tie a small loop. I use I use this little device, and it's called a loop tire. And if you fold your finger round the that fold your line round round your finger, not your finger round the line, and you you get hold of this little loop tire and you put it behind, it's ever so easy to use, just put it behind and twist it. And then as you then as you come through, you just put it behind that little piece there. It's like magic. And you'll show you won't believe it. And you get this little tiny Look at that, a beautiful tiny figure of eight overhand loop. Just cut it off. Just cut it off to length. That's that's all you need. That's where your baiting needle will fit into. Let's just trim that off to, to size. So that's part of your hair rig. A bit of line down there. So that's your little that's your little loop. Then you've got to tie your hook on. This is a difficult part for, for most people. Now the way I tie, the way I tie, I'm using just a normal, normal spade end hook. And the way I tie it is, it's called a knotless knot. And you lay that, if you lay that, first of all lay that little, this is your hair rig loop, just lay that along. If you take your, Whatever bait you're using, now that hair rig there wants to finish. Can you see it just wants to touch there and the hair? So the length of your hair, if you just put this up to it, say that I was to pull it out there, put the bait there, then that would be too long. So you need this hair rig to needs to just touch the bend of the hook, which is a little bit closer probably a little bit closer than that still. Somewhere about there I think would do. Got to take into account that that loop is to come through as well. So that's the length. Now the way I tie a hook is I form a massive loop all the way round. How is it hard to show this to camera? Form a big loop all the way round the hook itself. And then I take and leave a small tag so that you sticking out the back of the spade end there. And then you take this part of the loop and you wind it round. And the hardest part is when you first start off is just just getting just trapping that line. As you wind it round, you've got to trap that little piece of line, that tag that you've pulled there. You've got to trap that behind the hook as you pull it there. So once it's trapped, it's okay. Then you work down the shank, and I usually put about 15 turns on. Three, four, five, six. Working down the shank, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, about 13 would do. Something like that. Then you then you have to hold all that part and then pull all the line through. I use my teeth to start it and then pull all that line through. Just pull it through all the way. And this way you get a knotless knot. No knot, just I'm just pulling it through now, all the way down. There. Make sure that line comes out just on the back of the hook there, coming out on the underside of the hook. It's important, it just comes out on the underside of that spade end there. And there you have a perfectly tied hook without any knot, and then you can pull your pull your bait onto that hair rig there. I'll just show you how to pull that pull it on again and so you you would then just pull that through 
onto your bait. Keeping my bait in the pocket today to keep it. It's in a polythene bag and I'm keeping it in my pocket to keep it moist. It's soaked in a special oil to keep it floating. Special halibut oil. I've got some of these pellets that are drilled. So then you would just pull it onto your onto your hair rig like that so it just hangs perfectly and then a bait stop on the back which we did earlier and that's it it's as easy as that so that's my spare one I've already baited up again on here after that last fish I'm going straight out when you're casting just if you pick now I've picked a marker that I'm casting to and I'm casting in the same direction every time. So just pick that marker where you're casting and feeding to. You can vary the distance a bit because the wind's blowing. If you just cast straight through with the rod, it makes a lovely splash as it hits the water. That will attract the fish as well. And then just watch behind the float. That's where you'll see movement, just behind the float for signs of fish coming up to take. You don't really, you don't have to hold the rod, I just leave it in the rest there. The ante reverse is off, so the reel handle will turn round if a fish takes it. And then you can feed. Some of these, the soak pellets are much heavier than, if you have a look at the difference between the soak pellet and the unsoaked one, and it's much heavier, the so ones that I've soaked are much heavier, so you can feed them at distance more. And you only need to feed one or two, that's just one I've just fired out there, just around the float area. It doesn't matter too much because they'll drift away and yet, and the one of course with the float is staying fairly, fa fairly still, it's just drifting across the current a bit. So it doesn't really matter, you just, they don't, just try to, that's a good shot, just this side of the float, that's perfect. One or two at a time. If there's loads of fish feeding, you can put two, or three in, but if there's not many feeding, then just one. Just keep firing in single baits while you're watching your float. And look for, also look for fish coming up to that bait. Once you see fish moving on the top, coming for your bait, then get ready because they'll take yours. And it worked, I'm into another one already. This feels like a good fish. You can never tell because they're all big fish, so you can never, never really tell. Usually the really big fish stay deep. Run off hard and then stay very deep, but you can never assess it, and because the the rod and the reel, the line I'm using, everything is quite, quite strong. You can put a lot of pressure onto these fish. Just make sure that you keep the, as you're playing the fish, make sure you keep a bend in your rod. That's, the rod is a shock absorber really. If you point your rod directly at the fish, and it yanks off then it can break you. So you use the bend in the rod as a shock absorber while you're playing the fish. It doesn't matter, you can, you can keep your rod up to do it or you can keep your rod to the side, it doesn't matter. So if I put my rod down to the side like that, as long as there's a bend in the rod, that's fine. As long as you never, never point your rod exactly at the fish, either keep it up or keep it to its side. I prefer to keep mine sort of up and then as the fish 
runs away at a certain angle, then I angle the rod just a little bit in the opposite direction, just to put some power on it. I just love this rod, 11 foot rods are really good for this sort of fishing. When you get the fish in close, they're easier to net. You don't need a big long rod for this type of fishing. There's the float coming out of the water again. Incredible, I don't know who designed this type of float, these controller floats, but in the first place, I mean, I don't know who invented it. Then now there's some brilliant ones on the market. And this particular one I'm using, I find is very, very good. Always, the weight on it seems to be perfect. You know, I can see it at any distance. Don't need to add any extra shot on it. And this one, the, 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 the 70 gram one, which 70 grams is just over two ounces, can really, with the wind behind me, cast it a long, long way and yet still get the stability on the bait. And I guess I'm fishing about 50 metres, something like that. Sometimes you need to cast a, a reasonable distance from the bank. The further you go, carp are shy, they stay away a little bit, but the further you cast them, the less wary they are, the more chance you've got of hooking them. And then just feeding those one or two pellets at a time, one or two expander pellets just to get the fish into the area. Just get them, it's always the same. It's feeding. Just getting the fish, taking those odd pellet, the loose offerings. They get confident in taking the loose and the, uh, the loose offerings. And then it overcomes their fear and then they have a go, oh, this is a lovely fish. They're all cracking fish today. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Conditions are not perfect today. It is very, very windy. Really windy. And I mean, it's June and I've got a jacket on. Wouldn't normally have that. This is the sort of jacket I wear in winter sometimes. It's not, not really red hot. But the water temperature is probably, probably okay. Well, it must be okay because we're catching fish on the surface, so. I thought I'd got that fish in then and it's, but it's still fighting. Can see why carp are really the country's favourite fish. Just the power that you get from carp. Really do put up a good account of themselves. Keeping that rod really, making sure I keep the bend in the rod. That just ensures a fish can't break you. All those knots that I showed you, remember those? No weak links at all. <laughs> and then when you get the fish in close, we've got this anti-reverse off, so you have to just flick. If you look, you have to flick your finger there behind the... If you look, if you have to flick your finger there just to hold that, that reel, because that will run. Now the fish is running, so I'm back winding. And as you pull it forward, once you want to pick your net up, of course, you, you have to take your hand off the reel. So if you use your finger on the bail arm there, you've still got your clutch, but if it really wants to go, then you have to let it go. It's a really powerful fish, this one. Another cracking, this is a big fish. Oh, this is one of those, it's a mirror carp, one of this bluish special breed mirrors. Oh, just in the net. Oh. Hey. God, that was a fight, wasn't it? What a scrap. Oh, it's fighting in the net as well. This is, a, this is the biggest fish of the day. Oh. That is a monster. Oh, look at that massive tail. Let's have a look and try and... I'll try and take the hook out while the fish is in the net. Oh no, I can just, just see the hook. I'll take that just in the lip. Perfect. It's taken the pellet. And I'll try and show it to camera. Might be a job, this one. It's a big fish. I'm guessing eight pound or more. 
Eight pounds, yeah, probably is at least that. A really big fish. They're usually flat once they see the sunlight, so... Look at the sun. Glistening off that body. Can you see that, that sort of bluish grey? Really a special breed of mirror carp. Lovely big long tail, orange at the bottom. Perfectly lovely conditioned fish. What a fight though, a real scrap. That's lovely, beautiful. Now the pellets, the expander pellets in the raw state need to be worked on to use them for the hook. And what you need to do is take a one and a half millimeter bait, baiting drill and just drill a hole through the centre, go through the flat side. Just drill a hole through the centre of the pellet. That's for your hair rig to go through, so easy to do. And then if you dip these pellets, just get some halibut oil and just dip them into the oil and take them out again. What happens is the oil seals the surface of the pellet a bit. They soak up quite a bit of water in their untreated state and they would sink very quickly. So just that little dip in oil just to seal them. You can't really see the difference between one that I've done. It's, my eyes, I can see it's just a little bit darker where the oil is, is soaked in. So that's, so you drill it, dip them in oil, and then I think it's time to catch another one. So the, let's go through that again. When you're putting the pellet on the hook, just put it over the baiting needle. Remember that little loop that we made? That's just a hook, the needle on, that's all it's for, just so that you can slide your bait over and then use the baiting stop, which keep blowing all over the place, so I have to keep cutting them off. So windy today. Just to, just slot it in between there, just in between on the loop. Like that. As you as you put it through the loop, then pull it. If you pull it tight there, then the pellet will hang off. And see how it hangs off just below the just below the bend of the hook. So that's perfect. So all you need to do, drill them. I usually prepare about sort of 20 is usually enough for the day. Do them at home, or you can you can do them while you fish if you want to bring everything with you. But I just find it easy to do them at home. Remember your marker where you're fishing to and then that nice, keep the rod up straight when you cast a nice steady straight through. Lovely the float takes it right out, bang, makes a plop as it lands. That can often attract the fish. You just Sometimes you need to sink the line, sometimes you don't. I don't think it's making much difference today. I just saw a carp top, because as I'm feeding these pellets, they're drifting right away to the other side. I just see a carp top a long way back. They're not one or two at a time. See that one just by the float, and then that will drift away and go down past my hook bait. It's a long way out, so it's hard to get them. They're 11 mils, and I've just soaked them a little bit in water. So it's hard to get them perfect, but the wind can catch them sometimes. Try and just the noise of these pellets going in also attract the fish. <laughs> that one went miles past. If the wind picks up, it doesn't matter if they go past, the fish will fish will come up on the wind. They come up on the wind, take him, one fish will find the loose offerings and start to take them and work up on the wind until it comes to your bait. They always end up where the bait's going in. 
That's because they're greedy fish. Eventually they will end up where the bait's going in. They can't help it. They take one bait, they move forward. So as a fish finds a loose offering, it'll work up towards the hook bait. Ideally, if you want to be just this side of your float, if possible, and then the, imagine that the loose bait will go past your float, past your hook bait, and the fish will take that, then work onto your bait. Just make sure you keep putting your pellets out by your float. And these ones, I've just soaked them a little bit, just so they go further, but just keep one or two going downwind. Watching the float. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> just what I said that the float went. <sighs> Doesn't take long before they're on the bait. Lovely. I love it when you when you first lift into it and feel the power of the fish. trying to keep tension. Usually they try to run really hard but I'm putting a lot of pressure on this fish. The only thing is, I know this is probably going to have to be the last fish, there's not much time left in the programme but today really has been a day of talking about using floating baits, how to attract the fish into the area and then by using this controller float, so plenty of visibility, to position your bait at a distance. That's the thing, a nice 70 gram controller float. I can cast a really good way and work it. If you think about it, as I fire the bait in, it's going, moving away with the wind. So the, fin the fish can be at any distance, really. So the controller float really is the key. And that lovely, that nice long tail, eight foot from the float to the hook, the white line so that the fish can't see it. The hair rig bait, so that the fish hook themselves up every time. Just lifting into the fish once they take, because the, when you think about it, when you see that hair rig, the, the hook is completely free to catch the fish. You don't have to strike through the bait. Another good fish, so I think this will be the fish to end the program with, but it's been, it really has been a really good day's fishing. Apart from the, the wind, which is, the wind really has helped a bit in so much that it's taken the bait in the right direction, but it's been very, very strong today. I think the fish, because it's quite a cold wind, the fish have been a bit reluctant, although we still caught, we still caught plenty of fish, but a bit more reluctant to compete for the food than they normally would be. Plenty of power. Notice how I'm keeping that rod. Make sure you keep the rod bent. That's a shock absorber. And you have a really, you have a, if you get everything right, if you get the knots right, the float itself, it's so easy to use. Try it, next time you go fishing, if you can see carp on the surface, get one of these controller floats. Hair rig up a bait, and you can catch lots of big carp so, so easily. This one doesn't want to come in. Oh, what a fight. All the same. So hard fighting, these fish. When I'm playing fishing, I never stop smiling. It's just, just a wonderful feeling. Keeping that rod. So when the fish, if it runs to the left, I'm keeping the rod a little bit to the right, but up, trying to pull it round. It's a job, really putting a lot of effort in. Do you know, I love, I, I haven't seen this fish yet, so I'm excited. What sort of fish is it? How big is it? And the real excitement about what it is. And all the time that fish is trying to get away, I'm pulling, the clutch is going. 
And I'm just waiting to get the first glimpse of the fish. The float's showing me the direction of the line. And it's near the top now because I'm, I'm on that swivel. Oh, just saw the first flash of the fish. Be another good size one. I don't think it's quite as big as that last one. That was a lovely fish, but still good size. But look how hard they fight. I'm pulling as hard as I can. The rod is bent right round. And I still can't get it in. It's still, I'm still having to backwind now. Clutch just started to click a bit then and I'm backwinding. <laughs> oh dear. It's just hard, so hard sometimes to get the fish out. And then once, oh, it's still a good sized fish. Oh, I love it. Once you get its head up, then it's okay. Once the fish's head comes up, <laughs> dear, what a fight. What a lovely fish to end the program on. They've all been good quality to quality fish. Try and get him out. And they always want to fight as you take them out. What a great fish to end the program with. Fantastic days fishing at Fields End on the controller float. <laughs>